Grim the Mark, who they Grim the Mark. Little people the kings, little people the kings. I'm the champion, I'm the, I'm the champion, I'm the, I'm the champion, I'm the, don't know why you can't wanna wait to beat, but it's me, just to give you cash a chance to eat, what you got for an early day, if it is the plate, now that I'm back, you rap cats are gonna have to wait, been gone a whole year, still nobody got, the leadership or the heart, they even feel my spot, I'm the champion, must I say it again, the best in this rap game, and I can pay to win, feel I'm allergic to death, losing makes me sneeze, it's like you're funny rap cat, I'm about to make it squeeze, bring your whole crew, nigga, I'ma swallow that, so when it pops off, hey, it's here, it's on a holler back, it's 28 grams, nigga, I've been running this shit, so anything in front of me, you can fuck around and get hit, I follow you rap cat, so you niggas my son, and I'm the truth, wow, I'm the motherfucking cat, yeah, I'm the cat, yeah, I'm the, I'm the cat, yeah, I'm the, I'm the champ, yeah, I'm the Still rep the A&T, but I carry my throne Yeah, I pass it to child, that nigga hold it on And I am that child, as you niggas can see Cause back another rapper, I'll be a better than me And this goes to anybody trying to steal my spot I'm number one in the shit, so number one you got So when you cast stream, y'all is the best I laugh, like really, you cast don't really know the how You do the math, and that's yourself who really great Then add it up and watch it equal up to 28 The rest of them can't know who Really the done, I'm overall, I think you niggas fight for them for one See I put that on my life, put that on my son Gotta stay the best of people, they can trade love Then my throne and I'm the key, you can put that on my heart and I'm the god Cause I'm the motherfucking champion Y'all heard it, we the champions You better believe it Yes, yes, yes. Welcome, 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 welcome back to another, another episode of the Anthony Brown Show. And I'm yours truly, Mr. Anthony Brown. What up? Brought to you this episode that we call the ATL. And I'm joined tonight by none other than my sister, Miss Tyson Mama. Tiama, are you with us? And also, I'm joined by my brother from another, Mr. Legacy the Great. Y'all know what it is, baby. This ATL, ho, we in the building, baby. Beach. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we got the most plump, juicy, the voluptuous cakes, Miss Juicy Cake. Thank you, everybody. How are you all today? Too good, too good. Look, you know I'm I'm in the gym now, right? I was walking by the mirror like, oh. okay. <laughs> hey, Angelina. Sure you Angelina. That, that like button, that thumbs up, that subscribe button. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So great to be in the number. Just one more time. Yes. Happy so Friday. So where are you going to Planet Fitness? No. Um, golly. One, one something. I think one life, something like that. Yeah. I went for the pool. I'm going for the pool. For your, okay, for your therapy. Yeah. Like I said, because you, you, you don't have no weight to lose. <laughs> no. And I can't lift no weights. I ain't, I ain't touched out a machine in there yet. Okay. <laughs> it's just been the pool. If you lose some weight, you're going to disappear. If you turn sideways, you're going to disappear. Hold on, 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 hold on. I'm here. <laughs> okay. I hear that. When, hey, Angelina, you got to understand that two Tonys on the podcast, okay? Tony. Legacy, then we'll know who you're talking about. I think she's talking to you now, and before she was talking to uh, Tony when she said, "Hey." Andy. Well, I don't know Tony. I'm only Legacy. Look, she went to school with you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she know everything about you. She got. She got all the tea. <laughs> yes. But she ain't got no tea. She ain't got no tea about moi. 
Look, she said somebody, what that the girl Pete in the third grade? She was telling it. Now. Oh, I don't know nobody. Now who is Tony from Val Oster? You I don't know. I don't know nothing about no battle. That's why I said you lying. You say you went you were from Macon. She talking about you from Valdosta. You went to Valdosta High. Yeah. How you feeling? How you feel? That was my son. He had a basketball game tonight. Did he win? Did he win? They lost by one point. In overtime. They should have they should have lost by a hundred if that's the case then. In overtime, so five dollar Friday, fine nigga Friday. Oh Lord, help us. What? If you got you got one, you see, you know, if the Lord laid on your heart, you want to bless the bless the um, you, our channel and support the channel. We appreciate everything that you give. Dimes, nickels, quarters. You know, it's good, but the ones that fold is even better. So there's our, there's our cash app right there. It's $5 Friday, Fine Nigger Friday. And you got two fine niggas on here. What up? Amen. 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 Don't break them off, son. <laughs> Salute from Brazil. Hey, Gabriel. Gabriel, what it is, baby? We yeah. happy New Year's and Merry Christmas. Police da be da. Monotony miss me. Yes, we miss you, Gabriel. Yeah, you gonna like this one tonight, Gabriel. Angelino's asking, "What is the topic?" Well, we have a two-part topic tonight. The first part of the first part of the show, we're going to talk about why are black men the most hated in the world or in the United States and then in the, the world. And then the second part, we're going to talk about why are, why are black women the least married? Woo! Ooh, Lord help us. Say so that again now. So that's the that's topic for this evening. But before we go any further, we'll be back after this commercial break. Legacy Unlocked. When you're locked out of your vehicle, you can't get in your car, call Legacy. Serving West Palm Beach and surrounding cities. That's area code 229-630-7615. Available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Have you been denied disability, social security, or custodianship of your children? Call Antonio Williams. He has the knowledge and experience to fight the government on your behalf. Let him represent you. That's Antonio Williams, your non-legal attorney consultant. Just in time accessories. We have the bling and everything in between. Tayama Copeland is your independent paparazzi consultant. Everything is only $5. You can catch Tayama on Facebook Live at Tayama Copeland. Or you can find her at www.justintimeaccessories. Just in time accessories. We have the bling. And everything in between. Check it out. Just in time accessories. We have the bling and everything in between. Tayama Copeland is your independent paparazzi consultant. Everything is only $5. You can catch Tayama on Facebook live at Tayama Copeland. Or you can find her at W. Okay, okay, okay. Um, we got somebody new here. Um, hot topic. Um, Blue Soul said, "Hot topic." Chantel, Chantel, taking in from Florida. Chantel, make sure you hit that subscribe and that like button, please. Because they're the end of the Caucasian race. Uh, we, we, Miss Angelina, we haven't even dove into the topic, 
and you are already ready to get off the chain. She already let, us bring, she already let, let us let us bring it in, Miss 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 Angelina. Please. She already on level nineteen. Already. <laughs> We're going to give a quick disclaimer. Um, disclaimer, this YouTube and Facebook show contains adult content and conversations. Like Indiv what? Individuals under the age of 18 is prohibited from viewing. Viewer discretion is advised. We say ATL, ho up on this one. They also <laughs> say ho, ho, ho for Santa Claus, so I ain't said that no different. I didn't say that was the word we were talking about. I know I'm messing with Juicy. She's trying to mess with me. <laughs> if Santa Claus could be said ho, 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 I can say ATL ho. I mean, we just, okay, 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 okay. But Santa Claus ain't for the kids either because he coming down the chimney trying to uh, <laughs> kiss Miss Santa Claus. Now, I don't he think brought, nothing wrong with brought, I don't think He brought the toys to keep the kids occupied. He brought the toys to keep the kids occupied, and he bought a few toys to keep the mama occupied, too. But the mama toys come with batteries. And length. Or Santa Claus that's fully loaded. <laughs> I, I, I like that. I'm going to be a Santa Claus that's fully loaded. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I want to give a shout out also to our sister. Hold on, I want to give a shout out to our sister, um, Savage, Miss Savage. She she was a beast. She passed her, her exam, a teaching exam. So, shout, shout, shout Savage, out Savage, Savage, she yeah. Did, she did the damn thing. So she's probably out celebrating or recuperating. <laughs> You know, and if she know, if she know like I know, she's probably getting a good jug. Jug of what, Tony? Jug of what? <laughs> <laughs> so she get, so she getting re reward, Dick? Yes, yes. Oh God! Oh God! Oh God! Hey, Miss Juicy Redbone Robinson. Miss Loretta. Hi. Miss Loretta. The go legacy. Okay. So listen, um, we're going to definitely have a good time today. I know this topic. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> Miss Loretta, I, how was your day? Because I'm not going to allow you to, to, to bring me in. You text me. Y'all got to read these comments because I can't see them. You, I, I don't know when you text me, Miss Loretta. How did you get my number? From your business card. Oh. Was it about business, Miss Loretta? If so, tell me what type of business you, what, what type of assistance you need. It, let's 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 go forward. <laughs> what is you what is you looking like that for Tony? I, I, before we go for, I just want to remind everybody also on your cell phone, on you if you have a smartphone, we're on like um Apple Pay um podcast, Spotify, Anchor, Google Podcasts, and I'm gonna show you real quick how to find us. So so you can listen to us. And just listen, like if you're in the gym and you have your your um, your, your, your buzz in or whatever, you want to just listen to our show. Um, 
It's right there on your first on the front page of your screen, right there where it says Google. On the on the lower left hand side, where the four, where it says Google, right above the telephone. So you go to the Google, and when you click Google, it's gonna take you to this screen right here. And see the bottom where it says podcast. The bottom left hand corner. Some phones at the bottom left hand corner to say podcast, or if not, you have to swipe swipe left, and it'll say it on the next page. But right there where it says podcast, you click on that. And then that's going to take you to this page right here, showing you the, the search engine for the podcast. And then if you type at the top where it says search, type in The Anthony Brown Show, and it should take you right there. And there we are right there. The, the purple, purple in the middle is us, The Anthony Brown Show. So you can listen to us on your podcast, on your, on your cell phone, all day long. Um, Tony, do you think that they can, they can, uh, who is, who is that, for? who is that, who is that for? Miss Juicy Redbone, who, <laughs> you gotta read these messages, I wanna know what they saying, I can't see it, Tony. <laughs> we don't need to read that. Miss Loretta's just being nasty. For Tony. Little Tony. <laughs> Listen. This is this is crazy. This is crazy. But uh let's go ahead and uh I think I want to give a shout out to my brother Love It. He'll be um he's having a big birthday bash. Tomorrow, I'm sorry that I won't be able to attend. I'm over here with your niece and nephews, and uh, I want you to have a blast. He'll be turning the big 45, and he's getting old. Oh. Um. I just, I just don't know what's going on tonight. Oh, uh, I just don't know. But happy birthday, love it. Also, um, again, Savage, I'm glad you finally passed your test, and now you can come on back and and bring that good energy back to the podcast. We love you. Yes, yes. Uh, let's go ahead and um uh, dive off into this first topic. Let's get it going. Why are black men most hated and black women least married? Wow. Oh, man. Um, I want to start off tonight by allowing the juiciest cakes in the business to uh, start off with her opinion on this topic pertaining to why black men are the most hated and, and, and I mean, because we're not just hated in the United States, we get this same treatment almost in every country. So I want Juicy to basically start it off on and give me her opinion. And to everybody that out there in the um, ATL world, ATL land, we definitely want you to um, chime in and give us your opinion. Um, Tony, if you can, um, put up the link so if anybody want to come on, and and be vi visually seen and and express how they feel about the matter put it out there so okay. that they can be able to come in a link will be passed out in a second it'll come across it'll be in the uh, comment section and it'll come across the screen and if you want to come on and give us your opinion on it and not just chat it and type it in the chat box then uh we would appreciate you and you got that access to come in go ahead kate well you know in my world they're not the most hated. I love them. So I think in, in, in the outside world, they hate because they hate. They The haters are hating. It's not that the black people are hated. It's, it's like, how can I put it? You know the saying, I am not what you say I am, but you are what you say I am. 
so most people who hate black people or black men especially they hate themselves because they don't have the same color masculinity they don't have the same skill set the same energy they just not on that level of a black man and so in order to even feel good about who they are they got to put them down and it's a, it's it's sad that society sets the, the tone and the ones who hate the most are trying to make it seem like but you know when we look at statistics they're killing the black man so we could say they're hated in that fashion um they don't give them the best jobs we could say they're hated in that fashion but all of that is it's it's a different type of hate it's a hate that has nothing to do with the actual individual it has more to themselves because they're less than and they're not equal to now as far as why the black women least married we ain't got it that's another that's another side cake that's another we're gonna go into that later <laughs> you about ready to you you about worse than angela <laughs> um we for me it. <laughs> for me for me in this in this opinion i am a black man and when i see things like this and this topic came to me and when me and tony was talking about it and um i know that black women are the mother of everything every race every creed they come from a black woman we have what is called black women have what is called the eve gene and uh angelina what question about a woman a woman it, it the title of the show miss angela says why are black men the most hated and the second half of this show will be why are black women considered to be the least married in the world and especially in the united states but um with far as question why are black men most hated um me i think black men are most hated because truthfully truthfully um we're the most dominant we have the most dominant genes when it comes to pretty much anything if a black man puts his mind to it not only do we take it over we 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 dominate it and we 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 expand it greater than what it was um when it was just done by any other race um if you look at basketball um basketball was pretty much when um dr naismith came out with basketball it was pretty much a sport played by um it was pretty much a uh, sport that was dominated by white males. I mean, and we were not allowed to play. And that was that was even in football, um, golf, tennis. We were not allowed to play. Now, once you first enter us into these sports and allow us to get there, all the records are dominated and so far unreachable, unobtainable for white guys that it takes another black man to come along and chase down another black man for these records and the only sport that i see that we really don't dominate and that's because we're really not too interested in it is like hockey and that would be uh swimming black folks don't like to swim too much so we ain't really in there like that but i just think that our genes our bloodline when it when it mixes with any other race we take over that person's dna makeup even their look their characteristics so a lot of times we're the most hated because we're considered to be the most feared why a lot of races fear us just because of either what they've heard about us or just because they are inferior to the black man's strength knowledge so for me you know most people fear what they don't understand so because they don't understand us nor do they care to understand us uh that makes them fearful and that what makes what makes them want to eliminate our race or especially black men so 
what do you think, Tayama? What is your opinion on it? Um, I came in on the end. I was here early. Let's be clear, but I have some. I have some junk going on over here. But um, I didn't really hear what it was, so I came in on the butt end of it. Why black? The topic is. Head? Or why do you feel, or why do you think, like you know, Let me let me answer my 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 opinion, Tamara, to give you a chance to, to think about it. If you don't mind. That's easy. They know we're superior. <laughs> if if you could have our foot on our necks and we came this far, imagine if we had equal rights all the way around the board. So literally, it's self-explanatory. It, you it, still it seems, manage to make things for yourself in a world that you're not supposed to be nothing. That speaks volume. You're superior, period. I think I think it goes all the way back even to the slavery days, because you know during the time where where the, where the Europeans was bringing bringing blacks. You know, Africans from Africa to to America to enslave them, they didn't realize what they was doing. You know, they thought they was bringing slaves, but what they really was bringing, they was bringing doctors, lawyers, teachers, um, you know, um, anthrop anthropologists, um, different races. I mean, diff different different creations. Di di you know, people with great minds, visionaries. There was you know. So they had no idea what they was actually bringing. And after they got us here, and those chains was unleashed, we we had to show we showed up and then we had to show out. And like the like the scriptures say, if God before you, who can be against you? And, and you know, one thing one thing for sure, two things for certain is black people as a whole, even before Christianity came to into play, we were some praying people. Mm. And, you know, we believed in our ancestors, our our. our um, this, you know, the kid that died before us, whether it was, you know, whether today they want to call it voodoo, but whether they want to call it voodoo or whatever you want to call it, they was praying people and they believed in something higher than higher and more powerful than themselves. And with that thought in mind, um, they always pre um, persevered in whatever situation you, you placed them in, you know. Um, so as a whole, Black people, they hold on. We got a comment. Hold on. Gabrielle says there is a black culture center about 200 meters from my house. Me being a hip hop rap producer and musician, and musician, uh, would love to go there, but I am not welcome there due to me being white. Um, Gabrielle is. I mean, have wow. someone. Have someone really told you that you couldn't enter this museum because you was white? And if you have, then you need, they make it very clear that I can't get in or in any shape or form from form, form involved. Um, Where are you the, located and yeah, what's the name of this place? I yeah. think Gabriel, he's in where, Brazil? From Brazil. Yeah. And you know every 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 nation every country got a different way they do things and and I, I wanted to try to like I was listening every country don't hate black people. Hey, Amen. You, gotta, you have to un understand. And the United States of America is where we call us black people. See, in other countries, we are who we are, and we are respected for who we are. Most of the time, we are not respected, and and the reason why they're disliked is because in other countries, they looking at the black man like, why are you not living up to who you are? Because we know you're great, and over there, you letting them make y'all not be great. Before they came and brought the slaves that they took from other countries, there were natives here who were dark skinned, blacker than black, and they are from this land. So they know that they came here and they, they met their match. But you know, it's, it's like, they used to wear our skin as shoes, the leather. It's, it's, they, they value us, they value our, our blood, they value our organs. They have so much about us that they are intrigued of as that it's, it's not hate. 
it's, it's like an obsession. Angelina said, Juicy, uh, you're right about that. We are loved in other places. Um, it's like I it's like I tell people all the time, I, I got a lot of Haitian friends, especially guys. And 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 I've met a few African and other nationalities of black people that say that when they actually come into the country, um that they when they're going through the US embassies, that when they come in the right way. When they come, when they go to the U.S. Embassy before they come in with their visas and things of that nature, that they are they are show videos where they tell other blacks do not come to this country and intermingle with other blacks because most most blacks are violent and they are dangerous and things of that nature. So when these other black people actually embark into the country and start their life. This is their observation of who we are before they even get to know who we are. Gabriel said, this conversation is important. I appreciate, oh, I mean, yeah, I appreciate the way we are bringing the talk together. Racism is wrong in every country. Sad it happens, though. It's very clear. Um, I want to piggyback on what you said a few minutes ago, um, Legacy and um, Juicy, about racism and, and, and black, black men or black people are hated in every country. I worked at Lowe's during the Christmas season, um, maybe two years ago, possibly three years ago, I worked at Lowe's. And when I worked there during that short period of time, there was a guy that actually is from Africa and frequently goes back to visit his family. And he used to tell me things like, you know, it's amazing that you, we, us as black people here in America, we don't know who we really are. And just like you said, he said that he says, you know, there's so much more that y'all don't know. He said, if you was to come to our country and spend at least like three, three, three to six months and learn who you really are and where you really came from, he said, you, you'll be blown away. So the hate, the hate towards black, like I told you, it's, it's, it's filtrated all through music. It's filtrated. And, and the, if let's just look at it. And I'm just saying all we got to remember when rap first came about, rap was a genre that nobody thought would ever make it this far. Hip hop never was expected to make it this far because they couldn't see it. And when I say people who couldn't see it is the people that had control of the airways. Exactly. And when rap started to, to take off and blow at that time, um, it was a black woman and her husband in New York who actually owned the rights to every major black rapper that was coming out of New York and California because at that time, this is who was, who was actually doing the hip hop. And they had the rights to it, to all the major artists. And they were all black. And they sold their, once the start noticing that this music wasn't going, it wasn't going to end. It was going to continue on. They attached themselves and found that those, that family that had all of that um, rap, all those rappers and all those contracts. And they bought them out for like five or $10 million. And at that time, you're talking about early 70s, 80s. That was a hell of a lot of money. But to the people now who have those powers, those, um, those rights to those artists' their music, masters. And things, their masters and things like that, they've made billions and billions of dollars since then. And outside of Eminem, we are the ones that control the hip hop music and everything. If you watch the music that is put out, especially by our black men, we're push, we're pushed to put out music dealing with usage usage of drugs. We're pushed to push out violence, over sexualizing our women, and hate towards each other. And just the last two or three years, we've had more rappers to die by gun violence between one another and the people in the street than we ever have at any time that. Rap has been out. And to find out, 
to find out that most of these artists that are in the mainstream have life insurance policies that these companies take out on these individuals that, exactly. that when they do expire, these companies make more money. Now they have the, the kids' masters and they also have the life insurance policy that they took out on them from 20 and $30 million. And they don't have to give this money to the mother or the father of that child that expired. It's just become part of the business. We are dying out here, and it's mostly the men. And I'm not saying that women don't expire in the rap industry. I just don't hear about it. But just within the last few years, I've seen more up-and-coming rappers in the music industry that are male slaughtered, gunned down in the street for little or no reason. And once they do that, and it's us. And I've been digging into it. And you have, when you, nobody really knew about these companies having these life insurance policies on these, on these kids. And we expire, they give you a few hundred thousand dollars. You may be hot for a year or two. And next thing you know, you're dying. And you, and, and it's all because the music industry pushes for the beef. I remember watching J. Cole. He's one of the best artists out here to me. And J. Cole and other rappers say they have they have gone to these music execs and asked, could they start pushing positive positivity music to inspire the culture? And they were told that that's not what people want to hear and that they can't do it. But what I don't see is white men that are rapping are out here telling telling them that white men need to go kill white men. What I don't see is white men rapping, talking about over-sexualizing, physically abusing their women, calling them bitches, calling them hoes, and all of that. So it's an agenda that's going on to where this is why, and this is why black men hate each other. This is why we exterminate each other, because we have been taught that the only way we can survive is to be selfish and to exterminate anything that you feel is a threat that is of your color. Because we don't hear our black men rapping and talking against white people. We don't hear white black men rapping and talking about Asians or Jews or any other race, just us. So the agenda is greater and it's now on a platform where we can see that through the music and the low vibrations in the music that talks about hate, Violence, sex, drugs, killing, that is what they produce. This is what they love to push in our music industry. And they know through the airways, black men get these feelings of violence. And that's how it happens a lot. Mm. Um, for me, you know, I can I can attest to it because I remember listening to coming up in the 90s and listening to um, Ice Cube and Tupac and Biggie and Bone and all of them great artists. And I mean, watching it on TV, seeing them walk right around with the gold chains on the neck, the nice cars, and it looked like every one of them had a nice, fine woman. And the illusion of this, and then the music on top of that, definitely made me to want to be in the streets because it was glamorous and we glorify that and don't nobody do it better than us don't nobody do it better than us the black the black um, race is the, the number one um consumer when it comes to um fashion hip-hop you know the whole the whole industry the whole look um let me let me just talk about this i remember when um let me show you how to divide and conquer why black men can be the one most hated i remember they had a few black um what do they call them designers um uh -huh. there was a group um fubu uh -huh. and carl Kana. Yep. at one time nobody was making money in the industry of clothing fashion except for 
Sean John, Fubu, Carl Kanai, and all of a sudden, all three of these fat farm with Russell Simmons, all four of these major black companies that were taking over the industry of, and the fashion industry, all of a sudden just died off. And it was Jabos. the fashion. Huh? Jabos. Jabos, yeah. <laughs> all, all, all of these were black companies that were pushing they 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 designs and we took over <clears throat> nobody we black folks wasn't really rocking um uh Versace, louis vuitton and all of that because we had our own lane and our own line and all of a sudden all of these companies go bankrupt and fall off how is that is because when the black dollar stops circulating in the Anthony, Angelina, I want something from you. What's up, what's up, what's up? Um, now keep, it, when, keep it up and they take you offline again. <laughs> <laughs> when, when our dollars stop circulating through that industry, everything tends to start to go wrong with what we're doing. I mean, and it just takes me back to Tulsa, Oklahoma, um, I I get. Hey, Miss Cookie, I think that's Miss Cookie. How you doing, Miss Cookie? Um, when it when is that when we when we let's go back to Rosewood and let's go back to Tulsa, Oklahoma, and you can look and see when black people were not spending their money in those communities, white folks were mad. They had to burn them and, down. And they came in and killed, pillaged, and tortured, and did everything that they could in these communities where black pe black people were excelling. And oh, Miss Cookie, I'm sorry about your back, sweetie. And um, black people were excelling and, and was showing that we can make it without involving ourselves with you. And it's like, it just hurts that, you know, we seem to never can stand up and then our black men uh, have really no backbone because. Oh, I'm so glad you said it. <laughs> well, Miss, Miss Angelina, if you want to come on and talk, we got, we got a spot for you too. Well, I'm going to pass it on since somebody else want to talk. Go ahead. What? There well, you go. Something. No, let me tell you, I'm de I'm dealing with some real foolishness that deal with white people right now. So trust and believe you me. Honey, not mama. They don't want to see damn black person smiling. Not mama. Yeah. Come over to mama house. It's like a thousand people deep. I just think I just think as a whole that like I said earlier in my conversation that um we are feared we're feared as a whole because of the fact that like i said we persevere in anything that we get get our hands on you know we, we touch tennis and boom show it out we touch golf show it out we touch football we showed out basketball you know you name it you know we we showing out you know even even further back like i said in the slavery days like i said when they brought brought those um architects and lawyers and doctors and teachers over here that they thought were slaves you know they, they, maybe they were slaves for a little while but you know but joy comes in the morning so that was just temporary that was just something they had to go through and in the midst of going through it um they, they still are in the midst of persevering because um we're not where we used to be we're not where we need to be you know but but we're on our way and as a whole, they're constantly trying to hold us back. Like I said, it started with, um, like you said, the um, Green Wall, Green Wall, where they burned down the whole city, where, where the blacks had their own community. You know, and, and you know, close to Oklahoma, they didn't want that. They didn't want that because of the fact that, like I said, and I'm a firm believer, if you hit people in their pocket, 
they'll be affected. As long as the black folks was dealing with themselves and spending their money within themselves, other races and cultures, nationalities, mainly the white folks, had an issue with that because they were lacking, they were doing without. Now today, for whatever reason, we as a black people, we as a culture, we try to fit in and blend with the masses. So therefore, um, it's so difficult for us to try to spend our money within ourselves, with our own communities, which we should. You know, I, for one, I believe in supporting the black community. I believe in spending my money, in, in, you know, in black. I believe in helping black communities. You know, when I go on, on baked goods or whatever, I go to Miss Annie Pearl because Miss Annie Pearl is a black baker in the in, in the community. That's supporting a black business. You know, when I go to a barber or get my hair retwisted or whatever, I go to a, a black person that, that, that retwists locks. I go to a black person that cuts hair. I go to a black person that shampoos hair. Um, I get my manicures and pedicures by a black person that comes here and do my feet. When I want my massages, I have a masseuse that comes over who's who's also black. So I, for one, I definitely believe in spending my hard-earned dollar in the black communities. But then the problem with that is, um, VHM and sit together. Uh, we need our own again. Reparation will make things equal and catch our families up to, to leave legacies and yes, inheritance that you write. Um, it's all about educating ourselves and taking action. Speaking of education, I don't know if you guys are aware that um, Governor DeSantis in Florida is taking black history out of the history books. So now, it's, when you say it's, it, it's all about educating, the education got to come from us because they're not going to get it from school. You know what I'm saying? So the, the education about Tulsa, about Martin Luther King, about Harriet Tubman, about, you know, the black history as a whole, all the things and all the inventions and all the, the creations and things that blacks as a whole has created, we're going to have to be the ones to um, educate our, our, our youth about that because of the fact that if Governor DeSantis continue to have his way and continue to take black history and black education out of the books, that's just for Florida. Who's to say it won't happen in all the other states? And if and when it does, the education has to come from us. We're going to have to be the ones to educate our, our folks. But, but Tony, I want to I I say this on that. I want to just jump on that part about DeSantis. It hasn't been all the way approved that he can do that. Could you say it right? We need to educate our own children. I mean, I've said this on our podcast more than numerous times that the worst thing that ever happened to black folks was uh, integration because our, our black teachers at that time wanted the very best for our black kids when they were educating in this time of segregation. Mm -hmm. So to take our kids out and, and to mix them amongst other races that don't have Kill said, uh, Miss Kill Elka says hi. To put them in amongst other white teachers and things. And I'm not saying that there are not white teachers and other teachers that genuinely don't love to educate and teach truthfully. But <coughs> if you mean to tell me that teachers across the board, people across people across the board that our educators are okay and are not and are not uh, writing, not writing, but protesting and asking for the, the people's opinion on this and just allowing this to go on. To me, you might as well be um before he um you know he you might as well be for it because I I mean when they were picketing when white people was Teachers were talking about they weren't getting paid enough. Why ain't nobody picketing now saying that, hey, we don't want this removed. History needs to be heard and history needs to be known. And our history is, is American history. Is American history. Because we built this, we built this country. Correct. Correct. And if listen, if DeSantis gets to do this it's not going to stop in the florida it's going to be raced throughout 
the United States of America. And if you can remove black history from education, guess what else you can do? You can go back to the Emancipation Proclamation and also rewrite out where Abe Lincoln and the Republicans signed about black folks not being slaves anymore. And then guess what? They'll go back and rewrite that and start trying to put you back in slavery. Well, first off, I don't think we really ever got out of slavery. Um, they Preach. just renamed it. Preach. And, and, and what we got to really realize when you speak on they took us and they did, yes, they brought everything you named, Tony, all the teachers, all the doctors, all the professionals here. However, they poison you every day. They brainwash you every day. And and the will, the willpower, like at, at one point, there's books saying that they used the way the world was built on survival of the fittest is they would take the children from the mother and the, when they were born. And those children who survived were the ones who became kingship and had their had the royalty and who could be the leader because those were the ones who had the willpower to do what it took to persevere and to be on top. We comply. We aren't standing up for ourselves. We still accept the title as a black person in this country, knowing that that means we are nothing. Until we make that change and transition and be who we need to be, we just gonna be talking constantly. Gabrielle spoke about how over in his country, they are they did the same thing said you can't come into uh, into here because you're a white man and he feels that's wrong to be treated that way but that's not wrong in a sense when it's it's wrong cuz it's based on race but it's not wrong when it's based on this is our property and we don't want you in you're able to have boundaries you're able to have your zones your guides what, what you need to keep your foundation your family your home your group secure we as black people don't do that for each other we have gone and taken when you speak about the the rappers they they were all bought and into a contract and in law it's not right and wrong it's legality and the the, the laws aren't written for us the laws are written to oppress us they're written against us so we we are in a a lose lose situation as long as we remain black. And and you know what, Juicy, I listen to you say that, and I hear you because, um, I think Angelina said earlier, what are we gonna do about it? We have to stop living in the past. So what are we gonna do about it? I'm gonna say this, Angela. Uh, we showed them a lot. Now they do not need us. Um, I'm gonna say this: in order to to in order to move forward, I, you have to revisit the past in order to remember what it was that you went through. So, no, you don't have to live in the past, but the past is there for you to reflect on and to remember what your ancestors went through in order for you to be where you have a better opportunity today. If you lose the past and it's wiped away, who are you? What have you been through in history for us to re for us to, to think about? Because what they're not doing is saying, I, I see you, um, um, Angelina said, we need to educate, we need education and resources to create, um, they can own wealth and land. I mean, these things have been talked about and visited all the time, but the, the best thing to do first is you have to reprogram the mindset of the people. Um, a thousand one things everyone should know about African American history, book we all need in our homes for our kids to read. Um, that's very nice, Miss Cookie. A lot of people need to get that. White taking over Riviera Beach, West Palm Beach. They are taking over. Um, I just think history is great. I think history is needed for us to. 
Andrew said nobody's for saying forget. Those who forget the past are doomed to re to repeat it. Famous quote. Very, very true, Miss Cookie. Yes, history repeats itself. Elko said, look what happened. But again, as Juicy always say, and I think she's right, you have to first reprogram. We need to we need education and resources to create they are their own wealth and land. You read that one already. I just wanted to comment on it, but go ahead, finish what you're saying. Go ahead, Tony. I, I know where I'm at with Juicy. I know what I want to say. Go ahead. Okay, Miss Angel Angelina. Okay, we need education and resources to create to create their own wealth and, and land. That is so very true. But here's the problem that I see when a, when a black person or when someone create a, a educational um whether it be nonprofit or whatever. Uh, organization that's going to give education, that's going to give resources, that's going to give stuff back to the black community or help us as a whole. The one thing we, we do and we fail is we get assistance from the government. And once you get assistance from the government, and they and so now, now they tell you and dictate to you how they want things to go. Yep. You, want my, you want my money, you want my help, you want my this, you want my that. Well, this is how it should go. So now you can't do it your way. See, if some of these black millionaires and billionaires would take their coins and open up these resource centers, these help centers, and this and that, and not get any assistance from the government, that makes it a private entity. And now, at that point, it has to go the way that you want it to go because it's your business. You didn't See, get and that, and that's I where not only that, even if you do give to the community and you have the resources, us as black people, we do not take what another person say to heart and actually apply it. But if the white man was to tell you the same exact thing that brother just told you, you're going to take it and run with it. Correct. Because right? there are research resources out here that you can learn to better yourself and do many different things. But being that, like, it's this brother, his name, Omar. Not that Omar. But he's with this group. They have an afternoon center over here in the Westwood. They literally based on the Black Panthers. You will be surprised how many people will send their kids to go to this center to eat at the school, have a snack of this. But for them to actually go in themselves, to educate themselves to where they have helped a lot of people literally get a lot of these homes that are on foreclosure. Us as Black people, we have been conditioned to not follow each other, listen to each other. If it don't come from massa, it's not right. You know, you. I'm oh, a big back trap. on that. You, oh, you're trap. absolutely right. Um, if it don't come from massa, it ain't right, <laughs> and that goes for everything. Um, we are so stuck on depending on someone else <clears throat> that. In order for you to trust, for me, example, in order for people to trust in what I have to offer as wellness, they want me to have gone and gotten my degree from a white man. Of course. So many people support Howard University and call it a historically black college named after a white man. Right. It, it, we are so confused that we do the one thing that we have yet to do as a people that we need to do is unite once we do that first thing and that means unite meaning set the differences aside and come together for one common cause and that is to live and to survive so whatever it takes for me to live and survive whatever it takes for you to live and survive we got to each be able to give it to each other without right without hesitation that's, but Juicy, you got to switch support. that mindset. We're not confused. The word is we are conditioned. Conditioned. It yeah. is a form of brainwash. It, it's mm -hmm. not confused. Let's be clear. One thing about African-American people, we're not confused at all. We are conditioned. We are I conditioned to where that. if someone do something to us, we are the most forgiving people I have ever met in my darn life. Amen. I don't care but, who you are, what you are. If you black, you going to heaven. Listen. Game, Jesus say 77 times, y'all done did it over 5 million. 
Okay. But Tay, this is the crazy thing. The blood. Tay, you said it so blood. eloquent because the most the thing that with that I have to because right now I want to use that C word fifty thousand times. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Cook and say, so Miss Cook and say, say hold on, Miss Cook and say there are so many blacks with multi million that with that are multi millionaire with multi millionaire multi millionaire ideas, but don't know where to start. And let me tell you, hold on, wait a minute. Let me let me address her. Go Let's ahead. be clear, Miss Cookie. It's not that we got so many multi-millionaires that don't know what to do with it and don't know where to start. They know where to start, but they know if they start, somewhere their money going to get cut off. So yeah. being that we are, we are definitely a selfish people because that is the way we were conditioned. Look out for you. You throw this person under the bus to keep you from being up under master's will. So being that that was the mindset that we have been trained and put into what it's literally in our DNA at this point. So it ain't that they don't know where to begin or where to start. As soon as they begin, it's someone way higher that's letting them know, if you keep going this way, you'll be bite where you were. Or you'll be so further down than where you were, you'll wish you never started this. So then it goes, I'm looking for self. But let's be clear. You don't need a billionaire to help move anything. If half of the broke black people, when I say broke, if you get a million black people put $1 in, that's a million dollars towards getting something off the ground. So you don't Correct. need a billionaire or a millionaire to get you somewhere. You at ground zero. I mm -hmm. prefer to be at ground zero than on the moon trying to go somewhere. Because once you up there, you have too many things people could put over your head. When you have nothing to lose, that's when you got the highest advantage. But us as black people, we will never think, oh, if I put a dollar in this pot, now mind you, you'll go gamble $5,000, $10,000. And I'm talking to broke black people, not rich black people. Income tax come. I see people in the casino that live in that bitch that I'll never see though. So let's be clear. <laughs> I ain't got time for the foolishness tonight. Us as black people, broke black people, I don't care about none of the rich ones. Only people that's holding us back is us. Because it don't take nothing for every broke black person that's on housing. Get a meat and get a dollar put in the pot. You want to do something, do it. Nobody holding us but us. But we are so conditioned to worry about everybody else. And you, it's not that you're worrying about them to figure out how they got it. You're worrying about them to be a crab in a bucket to hold them back. Not to push your brother forward. But it is not confusion. Let's be clear. You are more well, no, than conditioned. I agree, I agree with you. And I said, I said we were conditioned and we programmed. It is so, and, so, so conditioned. I the confusion. But that... Part, part that um, <laughs> That I'm speaking on when I say it's confused is we got so many people who know but still don't do. And confusion Correct. is a state of 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 not understanding, not not taking the initiative and moving forward. So that's what I was meaning by confusion. Let me tell you, not like not law. So to say celebrities, when you bring up the word Nick Cannon to me, I'm like, damn, he went in with the idea of I'm Empire. gonna try this. Like That's he, an empire. He, he he literally was ready to go in. He never he was his family always had money. You don't think somewhere up in the brackets, his dad and his mama was like, listen, they gave you a run, warning shot. Mm -hmm. You heard that man mention nothing else about no, nope. no. Nope. Nipsey hustled. They knew they couldn't buy that brother. Got to get him going. Right. Then, when they killed him, do y'all know they dispersed all his money in ways that he would have never had it done? Of course. They left his estate at $2 million. $2 million between two kids that's on this planet, and already that money is dividends by, um, what you call those people that they put over your thing? Trustees. trustees. Yeah, trustees. Mm -hmm. Come on. I mean, so but that life, goes his life works with down to two billion dollars. Yeah, we will be here all day on black people that actually try 
and you saw they tried, they either died or the industry turned on them in a way that was so crazy it wasn't halfway funny. Tay, hold on for a minute. We're going to get ready. We appreciate this topic, and you guys have been wondering. We're going to get ready to move forward to the next topic, but we're going to get ready to take a commercial break. Let's get it. They weren't loyal to you. They were loyal to the opportunity. And a person who does not understand the value of loyalty will never understand the damage of betrayal. This is how we get hurt. We confuse loyalty with attachments. There is a massive difference with somebody who is assigned to you versus someone who is attached to you. Somebody who is assigned to you helps you complete tasks. But those who are attached to you only want to benefit from the task that you have completed. They don't view you as a person. They view you as a purse. People don't abandon what they want. They abandon what they were using. But, but I'm loyal. I, I'm a rider. Everybody is willing to ride while you're in the yacht. But who is going to row with you in a crisis? Loyalty does not require lights or eyes because it is a heart posture. It should not require my presence for you to be loyal. Loyalty is when you have my back behind my back. Legacy Unlocked. When you're locked out of your vehicle, can't get in your car, call Legacy. Serving West Palm Beach and surrounding cities. That's area code 229-630-7615. Available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Have you been denied disability, social security, or custodianship of your children? Call Antonio Williams. He has the knowledge and experience to fight the government on your behalf. Let him represent you. That's Antonio Williams, your non-legal attorney consultant. Are we back? Just in time Every accessories. Time play that man, we have the blame and everything in between. Tayama Copeland is your independent. To, he be speaking to my spirit. Everything is only five dollars. Do you hear me? You can catch Tayama on Facebook Live at Tayama Copeland. Oh, yeah, or you can find her at www.justintimeaccessories. Just in time accessories. We have no, 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 no. and everything in I between. Receive, I receive, Check I out. Receive. I be the four Just in time accessories. We have the blame and everything in between. Tayama Copeland is your independent. Well, we had a good consultant. Down here everything is only five dollars. <laughs> you can catch Tayama on Facebook live. That's at Tayama Copeland, or you can find her at W. I, I, I would love to know what Tony doing. Well, since he got us on hold, you guys listen. Mr. Tony Brown has a birthday coming up, which is next Friday. If anyone would like to donate to his birthday gifts, Tony, where is a, a cash app, Venmo, whatever that is? He should have been put up one for me because I am the one in charge of getting the gift. Please feel free to donate to the birthday guy because we love him so much. I don't like him. But your money better be there. How about that? You love me. I was we didn't say that about like. Exactly. We said your money. We said love too. <laughs> and that too. <laughs> Don't worry, I put trees on his ass. In my, in my, um, in my, Epi Dream Girls voice, Curtis supposed to love me. <laughs> <laughs> well, tonight's second second half of the topic tonight is um, Tony. I'm gonna let you say it because I don't want nobody to start trying to chop my head off about it. Oh, so I get to cut somebody out. Yes, Jesus. Yeah, let Tony go ahead and bring this one in. Is why, why are, are black women the least married? Mm, 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 mm. Let me tell you, I would love to be on this subject, but I don't even qualify. <laughs> I get the ring so quick. I don't know. Why are so black see, you, women? You on your own with this one. Man. Oh man. 
Who, me? I want to start off. I ain't mad about no bitch. <laughs> I want to start off. I, I have an answer. The, the one, the one is one, but I don't think because of their mouth. Mm. Um, it's not talking about anybody in particular, but as an overall. <laughs> He don't want to get his ass cussed out. No, y'all, y'all always want to get defensive like it's about you. I'm talking about overall. But see, I have the biggest, worst. Let me tell you, this mouth here will cut you down to size. And yet you, you was able to find a man. I don't know how. I'd have been married <laughs> three times. Exactly. And so the rain, why, rain go So why is it why is it three? Oh, because I be the one getting rid of motherfuckers left and right. I have no, st- like, no, like, literally, you could call wrong and bitch, I be at, um, ready for a divorce. Oh, Miss Cook, if we go, they moving you to the ER upstairs, where well, we're definitely going to be on a little while longer, so hopefully by the time you get back in and get yourself settled, we'll be at, we'll still be on. If not, we wish you well, and I'll check up on you tomorrow. And Miss Cookie, come on back. You know, we're gonna wait for you because you gotta answer this question. Why why y'all can't get married? Oh God, I don't heard it. But this but this is my thing. Why do we wanna get married? But all the black women I know they married, so I don't the, understand the, this question. The reason why you want it, the reason why you want to get married, see, so you're thinking like the ladies of 2000. But think back in think, listen, let me finish. Let me finish. Let, let, let daddy finish. But back in the 70s, oh daddy. The okay, most I can with the that. The most married people in in the world was black people in the seventies. Every household had a husband and a wife, or man. Seventy, eighties, and nineties had, had a had 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 a, a daddy and a mother. Both both either worked or one worked and one stayed home. But it was a mama and a daddy in the household. <clears throat> it was respected. It was looked upon. It was the thing to do. Everybody looked upon their parents and saying, "That's what I want." When I grow up, I'm gonna be just like my mama and my daddy. So you had, um, like I said, so you had a, a you witnessed what reality was to, to see a a a functional family with a mama, a daddy, and the children in the household, and everything was going so so called right in the right direction. So that was the norm. Again, the white man came along with this: you don't need a man in the house; we'll give you free housing. We'll give you this. We'll give you that. Get him out of the house in order to break down the, the structure of the black family. They had to brainwash the black girl, the black mother, and say, "Well, you don't need a man. You're independent. You can you can make it by by yourself." Well, I give you a check. I give you food stamps. I give you housing. I give you this. I give you that. Get rid of him. So they did. And in the process of brainwashing. Years passed, and now that has become the norm. Well, I don't need a man. I don't need a man. Is that what you tell yourself three o'clock in the morning when you have the itch? You don't need a man. Is that what you tell yourself? Is that what you tell yourself when 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 your tire flat and you don't know how to change the tire, or your roof is leaking? You know how to change the roof? You know, fix a, a patch on the roof. You know, there's certain. You know, I feel I feel to raise a child, you need a husband and a wife. Because as, as much of a mother as you could be, you can't be the daddy. You can't teach him how to how to properly put on a condom. You can't teach him how how to how to date women. What how 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 to how, how to go find a girlfriend. How, what to say, what not to say. How to how to make on women. <clears throat> that should come from the father. You you can't teach him how to go camping, how to pitch a tent. That's Boy Scouts one on one. He need his father. There's certain things that 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 a son. And a daughter would definitely learn from the mother, but there's definitely a lot of things that they're gonna learn from their father. You know, or they should. They, and they should. And and in this day and age, so many times that the mother won't always put things based on the dollar. Well, you ain't giving no money, you can't see your child. The money has nothing to do with the love that he's gonna get from his father. Because so because you can't get no money, you're gonna make him miss out on what he's supposed to get. What he needs from his father has nothing to do with the money. So the child don't care about the money. The child just care about you being here. Just show up. I just need you in my life, Daddy, because I'm not gonna see the money anyway. She's gonna see it. <laughs> so I just need you. 
and, and, and then and then and, and, and black women, y'all block that opportunity to a lot of children. And again, I'm not talking about Tiama, I'm not talking about um juicy cakes, but I'm I'm talking to we own worldwide web, so I'm talking to the masses. You know, so so they take take that opportunity that a child has or want to have with their with their father, you take it away from him because you're not getting a coin or you're no longer getting the dick. Some women are still in love with the men, and because you can't get the dick no more, and and, and Brenda or Shirley down the street is now getting it, you're mad. Because now he's fucking Shirley down the street, so now um, you don't block him from his children. Carry it away, somebody. Oh, oh, I'm a, oh man. I'm going to let Juicy go, and then I go out the cake. Well, I don't know which subject to talk about. The one Why are black women the least married? It's on the screen. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, because I'm talking about or what Tony was talking about. He, all he of that is in the process of why black was, people. All it was about that topic. Oh, I thought it was a whole separate one. But um, <laughs> but, you know, I I think I agree partially with Tony. Um. In the independence, I think black women are least married because of the program, and the program has gotten them to be so independent and so able and strong and have more willpower than the man, whether it be white man, black man, Chinese man. Their survival tactic is I, I will survive and they're not going for nothing less. Um, I know that's what it is with me. I was married. I got plenty of rings. I choose not to marry those people who wanted to marry me. So. But I'm a firm believer. And tell me if you agree or disagree, Juicy. With all the, the qualities, attributes, and knowledge skills, everything that you bring to the table and money and finances. Just think if you had two of that. So let's say Juicy's bringing $75,000, um, bachelor's degree, um, teaching education, her ho um, holistic living to the table. What if you had two of that, meaning the husband or the man? Wouldn't that be greater? Now you got one hundred and fifty thousand dollars as opposed to seventy five thousand, because that's more. Well, money. I thought I most definitely don't say two is not better than one. That is not it at all. <clears throat> but the reason why women aren't being proposed to and being in that type of relationship is because of what they've had to, like you said, the program endure and where they are today they're overpowering so men are insecure they're not strong enough oh that oh, oh my god like, here we come with this bullshit well <laughs> you might consider it that but that's where you all say that woman who say she don't need a man i'm not her but the woman who says she don't need a man and do get out and change her tire but she's single and she, 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 but what is the, but Juicy, what is the number of women that do that? If we're looking at the overall picture, the vast majority of women are not doing that, right? Now, the vast majority of the women that I know, they're not doing half of the stuff that the women who society is based these views on do, but that's what we're basing it off of, Juicy. We're not basing it on. 200 people that you may know we're, we're basing this people. we're basing this off of what you see that's produced and shown throughout tv social media and everything i explained to you one time before that you have to start getting on social media and not just for promotion of your business but to see what why this topic is even relevant because this goes on into the world and it has nothing to do about most of the women, what they've been through. It's women have been programmed not just through what they see here in, in, through social media. These women are, 
are very selfish. They're very aggressive and not just not just towards things that they want in life, but they've become men. But I, and, I mean, and you, you use different adjectives and, and because I didn't choose to, to shoot down the character of a woman and I said the same thing. What's the problem? I haven't fit because because I said that man is insecure because where I run into, I'm speaking on the men. And and I can, but, I'm talking about more than just two hundred. I'm speaking on the people in the in episodes and the things that I see, but, even when I do tune into the TV let me ask you this, and let me ask the you shows. This. So juicy, based okay, so we're talking about the masses. So in your idea of the masses, do you see more men that's insecure than more men that are secure? Yes. Oh, I don't know where y'all live at. When insecurity is, I know what insecurity is. I'm college educated, but the question is, no, do you more I wasn't saying that you aren't educated. I was going to give you an example of what an insecure man, even the tedious, questioning where you are. Women are insecure too. Not saying that they're not. But when that man can't handle a, a businesswoman who mm -hmm. is working and doing her thing, she ain't got time to be texting, ain't got time to be answering the phone because she got to get what she got to get. That's an insecure man. And okay. they can't handle that. I'm speaking to them, and there are a lot of them out there. Even men with money who feel that they got enough money that I, you should be answering my call when I call. That's okay. insecure. Let me answer that question. Sometimes, and some of those examples you're probably giving, sometimes people are getting with people who's not equally yoked to them and shouldn't be with them. If, if, she's, if she's a master's degree, college educated, an accountant, CPA, lawyer, doctor, whatever, she shouldn't be getting with Tyrone who's flipping burgers at Burger King, and this is why I'm gonna tell you why. But you know Tyrone got that good dick, so I need you to stop. <laughs> you gotta go over there and mess with Tyrone try to get that bike broke in now. Let me tell you. Because but you know what, but at the same time, the one who's her caliber, who's her match, he ain't going for her because there's competition there. He's going for the one he can manipulate, who's less than, so she gotta go less than. That's, that's just that's, how it is. That's, that's sometimes, but we're talking about the woman. That's sometimes, because right now we're talking I got about the woman that, that has a master's degree, that's looking for the husband, that want to be married, so she's willing to say, I'm going to I'm gonna take care of the kids, I'm going to take care of the house, 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 i am going to take care of the house i am going to take care of the house i am going to take care of the house i am going to take care of the house i am going to take Period. And give I, you. I, I I I know those people. Right. So so, so those those women do exist because I have a friend of mine who has a master's degree who's yes. a CPA. She's yes. looking for a husband and she's willing to submit. She she cooks. She cleans. She iron iron draws socks and everything. You know. Mm -hmm. so the those, women, those women do exist. Uh, I mean, no woman, come get all my men's. The reason why I said she shouldn't be with <laughs> guys flipping burgers is because first of all. Your conversation ain't even gonna be the same. Period. You know what I'm saying? I, if if I'm if if I'm a PhD and why would I date somebody from Burking? Only reason would be because mm -hmm. you got some good dick. But the conversation is not gonna be the same. So we're not even on the same wave level. So she needs she needs to date date up, not date down. But Tony, guess what? Guess what? You 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 made it clear. But the the most most business women who she's trying to imply about women don't women who have money and prestige and all of this they don't date down. You don't, and we've talked about this before. The average woman that has these things that Juicy was talking about don't date the Tyrone. They don't even hang where the Tyrones hang at. They're trying to get with people that makes their life better. They're going to be at places where people with money and people with education hangs out. Men. Their friends ain't going to let them date down either because their friends going to be like, girl, right. you, you even, 
even even but men with money because men don't mind with money dating down because men don't really care if a woman has a master's degree an associate degree a bachelor's degree a phd men don't care about that what men care about is what you stated earlier tony which is hey if you got that if you got that and you want to go get it that's fine i support you i love you but what a man really wants is to know that his woman is one submissive not just submissive in a sense of do what i say and all of this submissive me i want to feel like i come home to a woman and a man a man wants to feel that he is needed See, a lot of right. women, a lot of women although you want a man or you need a man or whatever you make a man feel like i don't need you and if he feels unwanted then he don't need to be here he don't if, need to be there if i feel that if i feel that you want me and so let me see you, what you're trying to say the men that be the, the men that i talk to they're afraid to leave because i'm gonna kill them or something Probably. you already know the answer to that but sis but check it though i'm for real though men just want women we want soft spoken listen we want very we don't want robots but we love soft spoken women Peace. disqualified Peace. 90 percent of the women in my family disqualified but hold on Tayama, that's not true you are a soft spoken woman because i hear how you talk to your man and i hear that you talk with him <laughs> with reverence and you talk to him nice and sweet this this is why this man. Look, let me tell you, because right now he's still on that pedestal. But when he do one thing to fuck up, and I see him for who he is, that motherfucker is in the doghouse for life. But that's but yeah. listen, that's, that's but that's okay. okay. But that's not but, how we do it because he's already proven himself. So that's called a mistake. Right. But that's that's also okay to be in the doghouse till you get it together. Of course, you don't warrant that. That that soft spoken, sweet woman at that time until she heals and get over it. But nobody want no man wants to come home and soon as he hit the damn door, he being barked at. If you have a man and the women that's on this podcast that I know, you're gonna get a man that's gonna go out and work and provide. So when that man come in the house who just went out at five o'clock this morning and come in and it's five o'clock, six o'clock in the afternoon and he done been providing, he come home. And you can see that money, and it's going towards your household. That man wants to lay across from something soft, soft spoken. Somebody, if he say, "Babe, can you go in and fix me a sandwich right quick?" That the answer is yes. And 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 he wants somebody that if he say, "Babe, you're looking at closet and pull out that suit and tie that I gotta wear to church tomorrow, wear it anywhere." That she say, "Baby, no problem. I'll take it and I'll get the shirt and iron it and press it." Nobody wants to come home and deal with a damn pit bull as a damn woman. And that has nothing to do with insecurity. And like Tony said earlier, Tony said it, and the F, this is exactly, as Tony, I looked it up. White women are raised, and Latino women and Asian women are raised to cater and to, and to love their Husband, they they get the same education as black women, and they go. They there are more black, there are more white nurses and doctors as than black men and women in the nursing field and in the doctor field. So we or in in the law firm, and these women still get their ass off of work and go home and be just as polite. Not saying that it's not true that there that there are not no better. Yes, and did, not only are you disqualified if that's the case, but the vast majority of women are disqualified of our color because they do not know how to be humble. And y'all, not y'all, but women today think being humble to their man is being saying, let him run over you. No, you are to, it's not to say that. It's to say, let me come home. Let me hear how your day went without it being a fuss or a fight, and let me tell you how my day went. And then, 
How? Tell me, baby, it's gonna be okay. Go in there and take a bath I when you come out. Hey, look, I can't tell you, baby, it's gonna be okay if I'm still mad with your ass for fucking Susie May last night. So, but we not talking about yeah. that. Yeah. About me, no, listen. When you get an angry black woman, she angry every woman, day. Yeah, that's the problem. Y'all are angry every day. Every day. No. I don't believe that. I'm sorry. Tell you how much they do the no listen. Let me tell you who the most married person, the most married, the most married race in the United States. White a white race are the most married. Hispanics, Asians, then see, black. Happily married. Not happily married. Or Over 20 years of marriage and better. I the average marriage of a black man and woman that we see never lasts more than five years. And I know that for a fact that I do the divorces. But you want to know something too? In those relationships, I did a divorce today. They, it was three years. Half of them people be with them so long they ne they in two separate rooms, not having sex, just to keep up appearances. But their whole lifestyle is completely different. When they when they sit down and they talk, they talk about money. They talk about things that they could do to grow. They don't talk about what's on TV. They don't even watch the TV that stuff together. We we so that's the program. Mm -hmm. And all that y'all say is the truth, but it all still stems goes right back down to let that me tell y'all like a story. Let me tell y'all a story, and y'all ain't gonna believe this story to save y'all. You life. right, Juicy. Let me share this story with y'all real quick. Y'all not gonna believe it. Just last the last night, the night before last, last night, I was watching Craig, Craig on his channel. I was following Craig and I was watching Craig. Craig put up a screenshot. I was trying to get Craig to email me the screenshots, but he, he ain't sent them to me yet. But it's too late. But I'm going to tell you anyway. It was this couple, man and female, had been dating for three years. They're getting ready to get married. He didn't propose. She said, I do and everything. So that's a fiance. They're getting ready to get married. They're renting an apartment. They had an agreement between the two of them and said, hey, let's save money in a separate account to go towards our dream home. That's what you do. You're building. Like Juicy just said, you're building. You're building together. You're building your empire. And, and the foundation is a home. So we're going to stop renting this apartment and making somebody else rich. And we're going to buy a home and, you know, live and get it designed uh -huh. to own it. So... For the last 10 months, they've been putting money in this account to, to, uh, for a home. Mind you, out of the last 10 months, he, of course, put the most money in. She's only put in 720. Doesn't matter, but still, in 10 months, he's put in 720. He's put in more. So, girlfriend texts him and says, Bay, I love you. He said, text, the text said, I love you too. What's wrong? He knew she was up to some, some shenanigans. She said, they um be be going on um tour and her pre-sale tickets is six hundred and twenty dollars. You don't have to give me a Valentine's Day gift or a birthday gift. I just want to go to the concert. So can I get six hundred and twenty dollars out of the stash to buy a ticket? He says, No can do. It's bae. You know, you need to have more consideration. You know, we this is for our dream home. Be, 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 Beyonce got her dream home. Many homes. She ain't gonna help us with, 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 with our home, so no. This is for us. Angelinas? That was from the other topic, Juicy. Yeah. So, so she, he said, no, no can do because you know this is for our dream home. And, you know, you said you're gonna help save, so we're putting the money away. We've been doing real good for ten months. You know, he said, well, this is very important to me because he said something else that she had said three months ago that was important. So that was important three months ago. You said blah 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 blah. So that was important. You pulled out some money, and now three months later, now the ticket. You got your priorities all wrong. Babe, this is for us. This is for our future. We're getting married. We're buying a house. We're doing it the right way. She said, 
Well, I put money in there too. He said, but you you only put seven hundred and twenty dollars in there. She said, well, can I get my seven hundred and twenty dollars out and I'll start back um, saving later? Which means at that point she would have put nothing into the savings for the house. All the money oh. in for him. He said, are you for real? She said, yes, I need my money because I, I got to go see B. He said, if I give you back your money, he said, the wedding is off. She said, fine. Let me know where I can come get my money. Uh, hey, let me tell you. I can't the Ricky talk about Smiley, Listen, the Ricky Smiley show was talking about this lady that literally went out her way to go to a Beyonce concert. She wanted to do the meet and greet, which is basically $10,000. She is literally getting a loan on her house. Is you crazy? Beyonce the is powerful. The is broken nowadays in all continents of the planet. After the pandemic, things got even worse. I believe it has to do with mental health overall. Hope things get better. Really also, I totally agree. It definitely does have to do with mental health. And that's also, Angel Angelina said, I can answer as I've been in a relationship with a woman for the last 20 years. I can tell you why. Go ahead and, and type in why, Angelina. Um, for me, let me let me say this too. Marriage to me, for to most people, especially what we see out here now, is not about I want to be with you forever. It's about I want to be seen and I want everybody to see the show that's going on the marriage. We was just watching recently, I know I was watching recently of a woman who wanted to be married. And she wanted her wedding to be like three hundred and forty some thousand dollars, and her boyfriend, uh, I guess fiance, which was a black man, that said, "No, I'm not spending that much money on no damn wedding." He said, "What we can do is I can put that money to a side, and we can go and buy us a nice home, so we can move into and start fresh in with our kids." But what I will not do is spend two hundred and fifty, almost three hundred thousand dollars on a wedding just for your friends can come and see you and talk about how, how eloquent and how much how expensive this wedding is. She said to him, well, I guess you don't intend on marrying me because I'm not going to just have a ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 wedding. With you got the money. You got the money. Spend it. And he told her, well, I guess you won't be getting married. At least not to me. Because it's about the show. And she called his ass broke. Yeah, you saw it, Tayama. <laughs> yes. But how can the man be broke if you know he, he got he enough money to pay? Say, he say, what you're going to do is watch your mouth. <laughs> yes, but how can you say this man is broke when you already plan on spending 300 and some thousand dollars of his money? Because he won't, he won't allow you to. Go ahead, Kate. Where you see this at? It's it's been love on hip hop. On... That's love and hip hop, girl. That's so, been on my. So, I really think some of this is scripted. Maybe, but when and they talk, it, listen, it can be scripted and it cannot. My little cousin, her, well, she's the daughter of Deion Sanders. She told dude straight up. If it ain't this, this, and this, we ain't doing this whole wedding. And see, the thing of it is, is that the way these young adults today, I don't know the age of the people on the show, but they much older. They so might. They like yeah, they like 35, 36. They not young. They not babies. They not in their early yeah. 20s. But you know what? But even even that even that generation, their parents are young. That's where the the like my mom's gender. My mom is seventy. Said about to be seventy six. The generation that started having children, the baby boomers after that, they all just having fun. They weren't teaching like you say 
direct and the home started becoming broken even more than division so much with drug use was separating and everything uh, Delita said, you're right, a lot of women don't need a man. Now with all these roses and rabbits. That's the <laughs> <other> toys. <laughs> That's what? That's those, those sex the toys. toys. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, anybody to have that kind of mindset and, and actually literally do it, and I see it on TV, to me, that's the same as these rappers rapping about killing and all the other things. It's part of the agenda. They got to teach the misconception of how to be. They got to get people to follow this trend, be this way. And the more people who tune into it and learn from it, then the more we going to have people being that way. We got to change the networks. We got to take back and stop allowing Everything what network, they, Juicy? Because we don't own a damn thing for no, us to watch. No, we don't. We, but you know what? We have power in, in more than just ownership. We don't have to tune into it. I don't watch it. That's not my reality. My daughter, my nieces, they see and know better because they see better. They might tune into it. But in their reality, they see people who don't tune into it. So they get to see real life what really can be versus the TV. But it's a lot of people that's all they fixated on. They want to be just like. And then that's mm -hmm. the program. And the how that mindset, like you said, that that's plain. That ain't ignorant. That's stupid. Mm -hmm. Plain and simple. That's that's just for TV. Ain't no one, no one in their right mind going to tell someone who can they broke because they won't waste money on that one moment. No, what she told him, she said the simple fact that you're worried about spending that that amount of money, that means he got a broke man mindset. <laughs> he said, you're right. I went from nothing and I refuse to go back. But, but if that's the case, then if that's how much money she wants to be spent on her wedding, Go in your bank account and take that money out yourself and show us that you're not a broke woman and pay for the damn wedding and I'll pay for the damn house. Because I could have sworn the woman, some, her family, because my first wedding, my parents paid for my wedding. Which that's how it's supposed to go. I was going to say the truth of the matter. And I was about to say, my, my brother married a month before me and his his wife, her, her family had had a loss. Her mother had passed so they could not afford they did not we didn't put the pressure my father paid for their wedding i paid for my wedding i was like based on tradition the father of the bride and his family is supposed to pay mm -hmm. for the wedding the husband and his family pays for the honeymoon and the reception and the reception right so take your ass to the justice of the peace and yep. i had and, and and the bride is supposed to take care of the, the dresses the suits and i and i if if i want you to wear this then i took care of it you want to wear hey, this mm -hmm. and they and don't fuck up justice of the pieces right there at tony house <laughs> do you yeah man i do too. Now, i was um, i was homeboy, watching go ahead tony my homeboy marcus he had got married to this young lady and he told her before they got married babe do you want an elaborate wedding in a church? Or we can get married at the courthouse and I'll buy you a brand new car. She wanted the wedding. She said, give me my car. Okay. They went to the courthouse, said I do. She was pregnant because he wanted you know, to be married before the baby get born. So the baby's not born a bastard. So they got married. I had you know had the baby afterwards. He bought her a brand new car, and they happy still. Right, but it's for Gabrielle said. I don't watch none of that either. If we bring attention to TV, we need to have a look at what kids are doing on Snapchat, TikTok, and Instagram. 
it's a very dangerous environment influencing wrongness. That's so true, Gabriel. Gabriel, have you ever, do you have children, Gabriel? Let me ask you a question. Have you ever seen a child or a teenager and some adult that once you take once you take these devices away from kids, that these things send your send most kids into a state of depression and acting out more than they do is if you know kids are committing suicide just because and, and doing hurtful things to their parents just because parents take these things away from them. And the way society moves. Everything is, 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 and most kids, since you talk about kids, most kids don't even think that they have a, a decent life if they're not attached to a phone or a laptop or a tablet or, or a smart TV to be able to watch certain things. So even though you may be right, you may can control to a certain extent what your kids watch and shouldn't watch. But if you take it away from them completely, most kids will rebel against their parents. Yeah, they're not old school kids like us. When I was a kid, we came home from school. We went in the room and did our homework. After we finished our homework, um, we finished our chores, did what we had to do around the house. We went outside to play. And we went outside to play. That means in the sunshine. We played kickball, we played um, volleyball, we played, you know, hopscotch, um, played with the dice, the the um, jacks, the little ball, yep. um, you know, jump rope, um, double dutch. But all these was outside activities. And we loved going outside. It was mad. Um, so. Tony, let me read Gabrielle. Gabrielle said, me and, I mean, Angelina says, um, men still want femininity in their woman. It's a different in being confident and don't know when to submit. Either that or they need to spice it up. Um, I, I don't know what you're talking about, Miss Miss Denard. Uh, Gabriel says, here in Brazil, the parents, the parents hand their kids tablets and everything. So that they shut up and don't bother while parents are trying to live their single lifestyle of um, partying and posting on social media. I agree. It's a pacifier. And over here too. It's a pacifier, but mm -hmm. it is. Um, I can let's go back. I can look at two thousand from two thousand and five to two thousand and. 10 I can remember only 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 adults had cell phones after 2010 you start to notice that kids babies and 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 up had their own phone and tablets that occupied them and this is how it is now it's still up to the parents on how much they see in the home through social media but at the end of the day, kids from kindergarten on up now all have cell phones because one, the kid are walking, they're walking home mostly from school because it's a one parent home and the child have to call and let the mama know or the daddy know that they done made it home safe. They got a, they got some type of tracking device on it to locate where their kids at. So yeah, a lot of times, you know, uh, kids have to have these devices because guess what? If you don't have them, As a, who is who? What is insecure, Angie? Um, um, Angelina, Anthony wants to know: Can you and your significant other come live onto the podcast for a show? I guess a feature show. Mm -hmm. Um, but for me, like I say, it's something that you know we have to learn. And like I say, just look around. Just look around and look at how many other races of women you don't see live 
talking about they don't need a man, don't need a man, don't need a man. I'm not saying it in these races that Wait a minute, new B B T B I mean Big T. I don't have a college ed, but I understand. And I know, my example earlier, I understand that was just an example when I said the person had a bachelor's degree or master's degree, blah blah blah. But it doesn't take all that. You know, you not, be, not for a man. You could you you could, in your situation, you could be educated and never went to any school. You know, so correct. Some you know education don't always necessarily come from a textbook, but whatever it is, you bring something to the table, and your spouse brings something to the table, and together y'all are building an empire. So y'all are making it work, and that's awesome. Because when you say y'all been together for, for as long as you've been together, that's a testimony, and a lot of people can't say that, you know, especially people in you know in, in our race. Because like like I said, I'm a notary, and notaries can do weddings and divorces, and I do more divorces than I do weddings. I did a divorce just today, and they've been married three years. And if you if you really ask them the question, I guarantee if you ask who filed for the divorce, if you ask what is her reason, guess what? One of it is going to be, hold on, Angie say this is a great topic. Education is the key. Not these white college, not these white colleges, though. Well, Amen. Andrew, to to say that, but that's that may be true. But there is no black funding that funds black colleges totally. Like Tony said earlier, every institution is almost every, Howard University. All these black institutions get some type of funding from a white, uh, what is it, philanthropist, yeah. and all these other type of things. So no matter if you think you are just going to a pure black college, you're normally not. And there is nobody that you can actually stand on to say, that is why I'm not married. I'm not ironing no draws. You, listen. <laughs> so... I mean, it's just crazy. We have to change. We went from being the most married and the largest family organization inside of the United States to being the least when it comes to nationality. How does that happen? And black, and, and I'm not saying that black men are always right, or I'm not saying black women are always wrong. I'm just saying that we have to find a a a middle ground to be able to say. We're going to bring family back first because if you go out, go back through history with Malcolm Martin and all of these women who had the women, these women make every all these women had to put their lives on the line to be married to these men. These men had a backbone in their woman that was allowing them to be the man that they needed to be. They had a backbone that was so strong that that woman consistently told them, I understand you got to die. I understand that we're in danger, but we have to bring about a change. And if that means you accepting that you have to sacrifice yourself and possibly us for this to take place, then I see your vision. I see your dream. And I'm with you. We don't have that now. And, and the strength of the black family is not the black man. It is the black woman that holds the glue, that holds the martyr, that holds it together and True. keep everything together. It's not the black man. He's the he may be the bricks, but the martyr that's the, the mold that's the, the, the concrete that's between it is that black woman that say, hold on, go do what you gotta do. I'm gonna hold this shit down. And we don't have that. We go, it's it's about that time. And uh we're gonna get ready to get ready to close out tonight. Uh we appreciate everybody for coming out to the ATL world, ATL land. We couldn't do it without you. We want to thank Gabriel. We want to thank Miss Kill. We want to thank Miss Angelina. Uh, whoever was that lady that came on that was being real freaky and nasty. We want to thank her too. Uh, we just want to thank those that participated and those that didn't that was watching. We appreciate you too. It doesn't take nothing for you to hit that like button, that thumbs up, and that subscribe button so that you can get this um, podcast every Tuesday and Friday at 9 p.m every Tuesday and Friday at 9 p.m. 
Um, it costs you nothing. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button, the thumbs up button, that like, and that bell so that you can get this notification on Tuesday and Thursday. So we're going to go ahead and get ready to get out of here. D, D Chapman, you, you said came in late, but hey, you guys, yeah, you came in late. You, know, you came in during the benediction, so we've been, you know, we've been go May the Lord watch between. You can always, <laughs> you can always rewatch it. Yeah, you can rewatch the replay. And definitely hit that subscribe button. Yeah, we're gonna do benediction but now. <laughs> <laughs> But we're going to go ahead and go ahead and let the juices cake on the planet. Let them know, Juke. We can find me here every Tuesday and Friday at 9 p.m. on the ATL show. Check me out on Facebook, uh, Nicole Purse. But also check out Enliven Your Way to Wellness. <clears throat> My website, EnlivenToYou.com, for all your homeopathic and herbals wellness needs instagram is miss beautiful and tiktok miss juicy cakes oh my goodness not juicy in the cake <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and, and break. <laughs> we're gonna go and break out the boss lady the meanest ladies in south florida but the sweetest sister to me Miss Tayama, sweet yes, okay. dance. Let them know, girl. You can reach me on IG at Tayama01. You can reach me on Facebook at Tayama Copeland. You also can reach me at JustinTimeAccessories.com. Yay. Good night, you guys. All right, all right. Um, also, we can go ahead and bring out the boss man. <laughs> Mr. ATL himself, the one that makes it possible for us to be out on this podcast, this ATL world, ATL land, allows us to be on this platform to be able to give you guys our insight, thoughts, and things of that nature. And as we all know, I say this every week because it is true. He is a pain in my ass, but I don't want to go a day without the pain. A.B., let them know. I'm yours truly, Mr. Anthony Brown. You can find me on all social medias under Anthony Brown or The Anthony Brown Show. <clears throat> That's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, as well as YouTube. Also, follow my Facebook page. It's called Anthony the Writer. I'm now on TikTok, um, Facebook Reels, uh, Facebook Stories. I'm showing out. I'm doing my thing, getting an extra check. Trying to get that bag. Arr, arr. And the words I live by is you got to grind until you shine. For business purposes only, you can reach out to me at 561-768-3710. All right. All right. I want to just give a shout out to our sister again, T. Uh, T Tavish. Congratulations. We love you, girl. Uh, can't wait to see you next week. Everybody, she should be back next week. Uh, hopefully she ain't getting jugged by that time. Go ahead. But before we before we end it, I want to show the um the video again from last week. Okay. There are three types of doors that you have to encounter. The first door is a manual door. It is a door that you had that requires effort from you. You put your hand on the knob, you either pull or you push. That's the door that requires effort. And many of us are frustrated, irritated, and aggravated because it feels like every door we've been trying to open for ourselves has been taking all of the effort from us. But, but God says there's a second door that is a revolving door. Now, this door is crazy because it requires no effort, but it does require timing. Because the revolving door does the work for you. But if you miss timing, you end up going in circles. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but the last six months of your life, you've been going through some unnecessary circles. And God is saying, I've already made a way. You got to make sure you get in my the third door is an automatic door. Jesus. The third door does not require effort, 
and it does not require timing all you got to do is show up can i preach and declare the reason anxiety depression and frustration has been on you so heavy because the devil knows in this season all you got to do is show up i have to keep showing that because um until it just soak into y'all spirits that's the season 2023 is the year 2023 2023 and me all you got to do is show up go ahead legacy all right all right also you I better just show that cash out <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh show your cash out right quick tony hold on you go back up Scrolling across the bottom. Oh, they probably ain't gonna see that. But anyway, um, we're gonna get ready to get out of here. We want to just let everybody know we appreciate you. Y'all know who I am. I'm Legacy the Great. Um, uh, I guess the cash app is dollar sign to smell good for less. Please hit that and donate to our brother's birthday party. Um, birthday gifts. We appreciate you. I'm Legacy the Great. You can um, reach me on Facebook under our Dream Williams. Also, you can hit me on YouTube at Legacy the Great. My email address is legacyunlocked at mail.com. Cell phone number is 229-630-7615. Businesses purpose only if you have any. If you need any help with legal services, um, I'm your man. If you locked out your car, need some assistance with getting in your cars, vehicles, not not your house door and things like that. I can't do it. But also, I just want to say, you know, we have to do better as I to unprogram and reprogram ourselves to learn how to love our people better than we do. And as I always say, ATL ho. <laughs> Put that on my life, put that on my son. Got 